Hello, hello. Welcome to todebate.net, our podcast of debates. Now with the change of scenery, I'm directly watching Sebastian in his very own, what is it, living room? No, it's a first class cabin <laughs> in an unnamed airline. It's a massive space. Yeah, yeah, with a lot of books and <laughs> some very weird lamp on your ceiling. They've improved on the airline uh, <laughs> and cabin uh, conditions to make it feel like it's home away from home. Ah, this is what first class looks like. Now, finally, I get it. So you you, you probably send a picture of your living room and they just make it the, looking the same, right? Including the energy saving lamp that you have. In, in <laughs> <laughs> You can actually see, see that. Yeah, you can actually see it right here, right? <laughs> I can. <laughs> let's, let's do the motion today. What is it? Uh, today we have a fun motion. Today we debate whether or not Twitter should ban Donald J. Trump, the president of the United States, from Twitter. Oh, he's president. Yes. I realize. Yes, damn it. Wow. wow. Okay. So today's motion is Twitter should ban Donald Trump. By the flip of a coin, we decided that I am for this motion and I go first. That's correct. Yes. I like it how I, I always act surprised as if in terms of, so what is the debate today? As if I did not know. <laughs> it's like, so tell us what it is. Oh, interesting debate. I think I'm going to think of, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe you arguments. should you should, should start preparing now. Um, right, exactly. <laughs> you, have, you have about two minutes while I make my initial statement and then uh, we see how you answer. Let's do this, except I am more than ready. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. Military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded. Should North Korea act unwisely? Hopefully Kim Jong-un will find another path. So that's me trying to do the Donald. And that was the Donald threatening North Korea with a nuclear war on Twitter. Now, I'm not completely into the Twitter terms of service, but most social media services these days seem to have clauses in there, and Twitter is no exception to that, that call for, let's say, some moderation in these things. So usually there are statements like, um, you're going to be banned for asking groups to act violently on your behalf, attacking individuals, attacking groups of people, asking, uh, calling out for violence. The list goes on. There's a whole paragraph section in the Twitter terms of service that tell you you're going to be banned if you threaten people online, if you call for violence, and if you use certain terms and words. Now, Donald has done it all. He threatened individuals. He threatened groups of people. He threatened nation states. And he did not, I mean, threatening nuclear war is about the maximum that you can do um, uh, in terms of threatening violence. This alone, I think, makes a pretty good statement just to begin with. How about we enact Twitter's terms of service and ban him right there? Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. Out of anyone, you would want to check if anyone's crazy. And in this case, you would want to check the president's sanity. So you want to have his unfiltered tweets. And the best way to have this is not to ban him. You want to check whether he's sane or not, so we can impeach him or not. And if anything, then a more serious note, this is freedom of expression. Of course, Twitter is a private company. They have terms and conditions, but that also means they are free to not abide to their own terms and conditions. They can also decide to say, you know what, we're going to keep Trump because he's a high profile uh, character and it probably draws people to traffic. It increases brand recognition for Twitter, which is not doing that great on the stock market. So if, any, if anything, they can decide. And I don't think we should do a witch hunt in forcing, as I have seen on the internet with petitions saying, oh, Twitter should ban Trump. Additionally, by having his tweets unfiltered, you can expose lies that he may or may not profess online. Uh, indeed, exactly what you're, you're saying. If he's attacking people, if he's threatening people, well, maybe it's a strong enough case for him to run into trouble rather than just you know, let him not express his opinions. In any case, even if you ban him, there's plenty of other medium he can use. If there's already an official president of the United States of America a Twitter channel, which he can use. So if, in effect, he has two Twitter accounts that he can use. So you just ban him, he's just going to be somewhere else doing the exact same thing. And you say, you know, you don't want him to provoke a nuclear 
war. But the thing is, you don't. You maybe, maybe you don't want to antagonize Trump himself. You, you ban him. What is he going to do? He's going to throw a nuclear bomb on Twitter headquarters. I mean, I don't want to take this responsibility. So if anything here, I just let him just tweet anything. It's at least it's just digital words on the internet, and there's no nuclear weapon being used in this case. Uh, I think I have more arguments, but I'm out of my two minutes. So let's not ban Trump on Twitter. He's so much fun. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Yeah, I know. You, you're you all in for the entertainment. We heard that in earlier debates. So funny that you mentioned that he has multiple accounts. Actually, by the way, use of overlapping accounts is banned by Twitter according to their own terms of uses as well. This was exactly the reason why Obama had a separate POTUS account and his own account. But well, uh, you know, for the Donald, rules are different. Um, you mentioned that, uh, uh, that Donald Trump is good for Twitter's brand recognition. Be that as it may, I looked up the stock market price for Twitter in preparation to this debate. And seems like not to do much for Twitter, I have to say. I can't imagine if Twitter now would decide to ban him indeed from their service. I can imagine that this would have uh, more of a positive impact on their stock price and brand recognition than anything else. Imagine the headlines that would make. We just recently witnessed a ex-Twitter employee pl pulling the plug for 11 minutes and that already made headlines <laughs> around the world. So I would say uh, pulling the plug on Donald's uh, account would help him focus on things that matter, you know, actual presidential work instead of tweeting against people, places and companies. Second, and that's a real argument for banning him, Trump's tweets uh, have a proven track record of damaging companies and people. So uh, there are companies that lost money on stock markets after Trump tweeted against them. And uh, there have been people that were threatened and uh, scared afterwards. So that alone should be enough of a reason to, well, at least rein it in. And another real argument I would say is that what you mentioned, that we can expose his lies or have a track record of what he's doing and thinking, come on. This is not really hard work to do. You don't need Twitter to expose his lies. You just have to open up a, a microphone line and put a camera in front of him and wait for 10 minutes. And then you have another lie that he mentioned. Uh, if, if he really lies that much, he doesn't need Twitter for that. Also, by the way, I didn't say he's starting a nuclear war on Twitter. I said he's threatening a nuclear war. And that's about the maximum threat of violence you can state openly. And I think as a, a culture, as... As a society, we should strive for being less violent, be it online, be it in personal encounters, and maybe moderate our language a little bit and be a little bit more considerate about what the effect of our actions are, especially if we are the president of the United States. So as a society, we should actually call for a ban of Donald Trump. I don't think, apart from being entertaining, he's doing any good for us because he's scaring people away, moving our attention away from things that matter, And he costs society and economy dearly by his, well, you told me, three o'clock in the morning tweets. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear it. Ah, uh, two accounts. Oh, what's the big deal? How many people have multiple accounts on Facebook and Twitter and whatever? And it's not allowed and who cares? Stock market. Well, maybe it could be worse for Twitter without Donald Trump. Like, people would not even be using Twitter because he would not be there. So who knows? We don't know. Uh, damaging companies. Well, there's no need for tweets for that. right? As you said, just put a microphone in front of Trump. He's damaging enough in himself. It's not because he's, he's tweeting. He would, be, he would still have access to communication medium uh, regardless as the president of the United States. So that doesn't matter whether he has Twitter or not. It's just an extra channel. Um, lies, well, at least on Twitter, they're short lies, 140 characters, whereas with a microphone or other medium, it's longer than that. So you want to keep him on Twitter because at least it's very short. Uh, he can tweet a lot, but still, it, it's always short things. And it's so much fun. Come on. The threat of nuclear war, you want to have, you know, you want to strive for a less violent society? Well, of course, we agree with that on principle, but we have another debate on that aspect. Should we preemptively strike North Korea? So I invite our listeners to go back to that debate because you're trying to shift uh, the conversation to another aspect. Because in some cases, maybe we do want to have a nuclear war uh, or use nuclear weapons before the other guys, the bad guys, 
or supposedly the bad guys, attack us first. So all in all, I find that your arguments are quite shaky, my friend. And Trump, as we have debated often, oftentimes, he's so much worth it. We have a de- that debate. He's so much fun. Uh, in any case, my, my final argument here is, where does one draw the line? It's always the same question when we debate about freedom of expression. It's very blurry. You know, yes, you have terms and conditions, but as I said, Twitter is a private company. They can decide to shift the boundaries. Uh, but if if you abstract yourself from Twitter and say, okay, let's assume Twitter is a public company or it's a public service, then where do you draw the line? Is it government officials? Is it is it a threat on people? But then these threats may still exist. He still has power to put people in jail or to just change the law if you wanted to. Is it you know government officials from all countries? So the, the line is very, very blurry in terms of how do you decide if someone is allowed to tweet a specific aspect or not. And again, I agree with you. It's not great to threaten people or call for violence, but you may want to hear this if it's coming from the president of the United States so that you can actually act against that guy if, he, if he's a nutcase. And I did not say Trump is a nutcase. Uh, just as I said, I did not say Kim Jong-un is a nutcase. I don't know. But you may want to actually see this written black and white, not just hear it, just see it written black and white. In any case, it seems some Twitter employee has deleted or has deactivated uh, uh, Trump's Twitter account. And it seems to be reactivated. So clearly, it doesn't work to try and ban Trump. Within 11 minutes, Trump is back online with all his followers. So no, there's no, there's no point in banning Trump from Twitter. Let's, let's the fun continue. Final statements. Dirk. Oh, wow. That was a, a whole world of, of fog just there. So let me, let me address that one by one. Number one. You don't need Twitter for him to get his word out, as you said. So I don't need Twitter to distract every one of us. Uh, and he can make his nuclear threats with the press corps. He has literally the largest press corps on the planet. So why not using it? The red line you ask for? How about enforcing the Twitter terms of condition for everyone? How about that as a red line? I think that's perfectly fair. If I call for, let's say, the Russian mafia to go over and beat you up, then I'm going to be banned from Twitter. Why not doing the same for Trump when he calls for his nuclear arsenal to be thrown uh, over North Korea? By the way, I doubt that any North Koreans really read Trump's Twitter account. These, These kind of things are statements purely for us. It's entertainment for the masses. He's actually communicating with his base. He's communicating with us he's communicating with the press that's what this is for this is for his own people not for kim jong-un so it makes it even weirder um yeah that would be my red line and by the way it's not a freedom of expression um issue you keep saying it but yet then you basically state the real argument against that by saying it's a company that can set the rules whatever they like and they clearly do they clearly keep him alive and kicking after 11 minutes they plug it back in so clearly they say hey what do we care trump could probably even get away with posting pictures of naked women something no one of us is allowed to do anymore online but trump probably could simply because he's trump and that is a dangerous message to send i believe because it basically means trump is above everything We already know he's above the law, but he's even above the terms of use of Twitter. So we should pull the plug to just say it one more time. (laughs) I think he should be banned from Twitter. Sebastian. Here's the thing. Something I have not mentioned, which I should have before, so you could reply, but now you can't. So that's even more fun is that, as you have noticed, Trump attacks the press by claiming he's always a victim. So if Twitter bans him, it will make his case even stronger and say, look, look, uh, the, the, the tech companies don't like me. And he already doesn't like them very much. So it will make his case stronger in terms of being silenced or a victim of that fourth power, which is the media. And do we want to, do, to give him this additional argument against the media? Probably not especially because anyway, whatever he says will be relayed, whatever the medium. So Twitter is just one of them. So there's no really practical consequence of banning him from one medium. If you want to ban Trump, then you should try and ban him from all media channels. And that's not going to happen. And it's never going to happen now that we're in the age of the internet. And it's not going to happen as long as he's president. And my point is, as long as he's president, maybe the best way for him not to be president anymore is to actually have all these crazy tweets out there and use them 
if it's possible in any way, I'm not an expert in the legal system, so that he can be impeached. So let's not ban Trump, but let, let the country ban Trump from the presidency of the United States. And that's my final word. So that's it. That was today's debate. Another one in the books, as you like to say, Sebastian. And I think we have we have quite a few now. We have 42 or 43, I think, total yeah. debates recorded and 27 published as of today. So thanks to you, by the way, because you do all the tech editing. If you have any comments, feedback, if you like it, don't like it, send an email to Doug. His email, his home address is... <laughs> 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 yep. Um, that's mail at Sebastian at Mars. Punkt, punkt, I've actually punkt sent a letter German, to, to Elon Musk. Uh, if he listens, oh, if, it's not if I know Elon Musk listens to our debate. Yeah, Evan together says, oh, with Kim Jong Un, they, they 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 smoke Cuban cigars while they sit in some lounge and uh, listen together to your to our debate. But that I did not know actually. Yeah, see? It's funny they never mentioned this to me. Yeah, I never realized. Oh. Well, anyway, I reached out to Elon um, just uh, uh, about 10 days ago. He's not replied uh, over email. So since he's not replied, I sent him a handwritten letter um, asking him. And I've actually included and mentioned to debate.net. So Elon, if you hear us, please uh, vote. First of all, on IG. <laughs> and uh, and uh, give us a shout out somehow. Very true. I mean, from the from the few hundred that we know that listen to, to debate, we don't know who's in there. Maybe maybe we have uh, like you know the creme de la creme of uh, the the podcast listener community out there. Oh boy, like, that that it's could not maybe it's maybe. absolutely we yeah. have the most smartest and brightest listeners listening to us. Let's say if we go if we go hunting for sponsors for this podcast at some point. What, what kind of sponsorship deal would that lend us if we say, hey, we have only three listeners, but that's Elon Musk, Kim Jong-un and Donald J. Trump. <laughs> and if you, if you want to ensure that they sleep on Casper mattresses in the future or, <laughs> or cook their meals with apron, maybe you want to you wanna spend 15 fantastillion uh, dollars here on our, our show. Something like that. I guess so. Ah, oh, you're making that face. That I have to go now, Dirk. Stop I, messing around face. Not, <laughs> not messing around. I, I can only agree with you, but I have to go. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. And you listeners have to go too, but you have to go to our website to go and vote and leave comments on the website or on Facebook or on iTunes or on YouTube or on Pinterest or on Google Plus or on Twitter or on Instagram. Or on, I guess, I guess so even on the walls of Dunk's house, if you want. You can yeah, especially on the walls of my house. That's, right. that's the best place to leave comments on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Stay Thank tuned you. for the next debate, uh, which is surely coming soon. And uh, yeah, bye, Sebastian. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, somebody should read the terms of service for the United States of America. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs>